Well, good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church this morning. Let's all get a songbook stand and turn to page 297. Page 297. joy it is to be in the Lord's house today. Amen. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here today to the service. And we also like to welcome those who are listening by way of radio. And we are certainly thankful for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to gather to worship God. Amen. And to thank him for all that he has done for us and being so good to us and loving us and being merciful and kind and gracious. And, oh my, just God's been good. Amen. And we can't thank him enough, but it is certainly good to see you here today. We welcome each and every one, especially all of our visitors. Good to have my sister-in-law, my niece visiting from the big city of Mount Airy. Uh, amen. Uh, with us today, appreciate them coming down, spending some time. And let's pray for them as they travel back. The Lord will give them safety. Amen. But as we pray, let's pray for the service. Let's remember uh, those that are lost. Let's remember all of our Young people, as they go back to school this week, I also pray for our school here at Victory. Also, let's remember our troops, their families, our missionaries, and their families as well. Also, let's pray for Brother Marvin and uh, Mary Robertson. Remember them in prayer. Kenley Edwards, Lisa Adcock, Mary Ann Williamson, uh, John Matthews, Walker Talbert, uh, Ernest Dickerson, Charlene Hanford, Pat Hanford, Tammy Brower, Diane Woodle, Ryan Roars, Kenneth Edwards, Darlene Hanford, Cindy Radford, and Bobby Newton. Also continue to pray for Stephanie and Cooper Ellington, uh, Donald and uh, Betty Ann Talbot, Timmy Ford, Carolyn Wright, Ellis Tuck, Richard Chilton, Dee Dee Edwards, Marshall Tysinger, Gracie Matthews, Evelyn Chilton, 
Tiffany Green, Maggie Carr, uh, William Cash, Sonny Major, Bonnie Major, G.W. McAlpin, also Rose Hughes. And then remember my first cousin that I was telling you about last week, uh, they moved him from the hospital Monday into hospice and remember him and, and the, remember his family. Uh, the Lord will help them and God will meet the need there. Uh, he did get saved. And I'm, uh, Mama said he got saved the other day. And a uh, preacher went by his, where his brother goes to church and, and he got saved. And I'm thankful that he's ready to go now. Amen. And uh, so pray for him, pray for his family. Also, we got another family back home that uh, we used to go to church with. And uh, her husband, she told my mom to ask us to pray uh, for him that his cancer has moved into his lungs and it's spreading. And so let's remember that family. Uh, the Lord knows the need there. Amen. Then remember the Hunt family. Pray for them uh, that the Lord will meet the need there. Amen. And then uh, let's continue to remember Miss Newman and Miss Martin, Nancy Murray, Bob and Doc Smith, uh, Miss Franklin, uh, Brother Charles Thompson. A bit of Glasscock, Lois Major, Pat Matthews, and Joyce Poole. Uh, pray for all of these that God will meet the needs. Pray for the choir today as they sing that God will use them. Pray for the special singing and then pray for the word of the Lord. Amen. And that God's word will speak to our hearts and the Lord will just meet with us. Amen. Here this morning. And so let's, let's just all bow and we can pray together. I'm glad God can hear all of us. Amen. He don't have to wait for one at a time. If he did, we'd never get our petitions made. But I'm glad God hears us all. Amen. I'm glad he's our personal Savior. Amen. He knows every need. He knows the burdens of our heart. And I'm glad we can take them all to him. And so let's just all pray together this morning that the Lord will have his will and his way in the service. I'm going to ask Brother Melvin, if he will, to come and pray for us this morning. Amen. Amen. How many glad you're here today? Amen. Praise God. Good to be in the Lord's house. God's good. Amen. He is alive. Amen. All right. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the day you have given us. We do thank you for this privilege we have to be back here in your house. Father, we pray for everything that's done here today. We pray that it be for your glory. Father, we, uh, we, we won't, don't want to take anything for granted, and we pray that you would just bless in a mighty way. Father, we do thank you for all that's went on here this morning from the Sunday school service. Father, we just pray that now that you would bless as the preacher comes today with his message, that we would take it and apply it to our lives and, and give him liberty and wisdom as he does. Father, we just pray for all the prayer requests that's been made. Pray you just bless each and every one that's been mentioned since uh, Sunday school this morning and, and now. Father, we, we know there's more and we know that you do know the ones. We pray that you're just blessed in a mighty way. Father, we do thank you for everything you're doing and we pray now that uh, anyone that's here or listen by way of radio that if they're not saved and hasn't accepted you as their personal Savior, we pray that today would be the day that they would bow, Father, and they would accept you as their personal Savior and get saved. Father, we do thank you again for what you're doing, what you've done, what you're going to do. We pray now that you would just bless in a mighty way. We ask this in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
as she lay on her deathbed her friends gathered around her and these were the last words she said oh, But she still had a smile on her face. She said, I hear singing, oh, they're waiting for me. Then she looked up to heaven and said, oh, as the choir comes down. We're going to release Children's Church at this time. Thank the Lord, amen, to God's goodness and grace. One of these days, praise God, we'll leave it all behind. I don't know about you, but I'll be glad to, be glad to trade all this, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. I think we're getting the better end of the deal. Amen. amen. <laughs> we're going to get the better end of the deal when we get to heaven, Amen. It's not if we get there, it's when we get there. Amen. So how do you know for sure you're going? Because I'm saved by the grace of God. 
And I know I'm going. He said, well, how do you know you're going? Because Jesus said I was going. The word of God declares that I'm going. Amen. And I'm just waiting on him. And one of these days he'll come. He'll either come for me in the air or he'll come in one day and sneak me out of here. Amen. But either way, praise God. I'm ready. Amen. I'm ready. While the ushers are coming to uh, receive our morning offering, make mention of a couple of things. Now this week on Thursday and Friday night over at Eastside Baptist Church, uh, Brother Joe Arthur will be preaching both nights. And so they're having a meeting on Thursday and Friday, August 27th and 28th. And uh, service starts at 7 o'clock. And uh, so pray for the meeting there this coming Thursday and Friday night, Brother Joe Arthur at Eastside. And then put down on your calendar and start praying much. We're going to be having revival uh, services on September the 21st through the 23rd. Uh, Brother Leonard Fletcher from Mountain City, Tennessee will be here preaching. And uh, so we're looking forward to uh, him being here. And God just put him on my heart and, and, uh, and God worked it out. Amen. When I talked to him, he, I wanted to have a meeting in September. Felt like it's when God wanted us to have a meeting. And when I talked to him, he said, I just had a preacher cancel a, a week of meetings. Uh, I was supposed to have been in Georgia. I said, well, the Lord knew we needed you down here in Hunnison. Amen. <laughs> Hunnison, that's right. <laughs> Hunnison. I've lived here long enough, I can say it. <laughs> but anyhow. So pray much for the meeting, and we'll be saying more about it. We'll get some uh, uh, flyers ready, and hopefully we'll have them next Sunday so we can start advertising and praying, but do pray for the meeting. Put that down on your calendar, September 21st, Monday through Wednesday night, 7.30 each night. Also wanted to make mention uh, for folks that you know that don't go to church, whether they're, they just don't go because they don't want to or others that are not able to go, uh, remind them if, to get on the internet. They can go to YouTube and they can watch, we, I think there's 30-some 30, 30 services on YouTube now. And uh, it'd be a blessing. And uh, maybe be, you need to listen to them, amen. I listen to them. Uh, I'll go through and I'll listen to the choir sing and listen to the special singing, and then that preacher starts, I click it off, amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. I've done heard that before. <laughs> But sometimes I get under conviction on my own preaching. <laughs> I don't have to listen to it. I can be preaching and get under conviction. Amen. But uh, the Lord knows the need. But tell folks about it. Just they can go to YouTube and just in the search box put Victory Baptist Church NC. Take them right to our page. And I appreciate uh, all the work that our uh, tech guys do back there to keep that thing going. Amen. And uh, so uh, appreciate everyone. Been a lot of folks watched those things and, and just getting the gospel. I'm glad it can be watched all over the world, no matter where they are. And I just pray God will use the services from the church, that folks will be saved. That's the, that's the main goal is that folks will be saved. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray and ask the Lord just to have his way here this morning in the service and bless the offering. Brother Mike, pray for us this morning. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord, that we can come to your house in spirit, in spirit and truth, Lord, and just hear the word, Lord, that comes straight from the Bible. And Father, we just pray for the service here today, Lord, that you just bless each and every one and ones, Lord, the prayer request made known, Lord, we just pray you deal with each, each individual that you know the needs, Father, each and every one of them. And Father, we pray for the schools that starts up you just bless the kids, the parents, the teachers, Lord, just yes. be with them and just help them, Lord. Father, we pray for the special singing, Lord. You just touch everyone with it, Lord, and we pray, Father, that anyone there that's not saved, Lord, listen by way of radio or here in the service, Lord, that we just come to you, surrender our life to you before it's everlasting too late. Yes. And we just ask you to pray for our country, Lord. 
just be with them, our missionaries, our troops, yeah. Lord. And we just ask you to bless us often as we take them in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He's coming back someday to take us home with him to stay where forever we'll, we will share. Fear filled their hearts 
They thought they would die. They failed to remember that the master was nigh. Then he spoke the words, and the winds all stood still. You see, he's in the waters. They obeyed his will. Now he calmed their storm, just like he will mine. If I just remember, he lives inside. So I should. I'm glad it's the very same Jesus that we read about in the Word of God. Amen. It's our Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bible today, turn with us to the book of Mark, chapter number 3. Again, I want to say it's so good to see all of you here this morning and those who are listening by way of radio. Thank you for tuning our way today. And uh, Ocean said Mama was listening today. Amen. And I appreciate that. Amen. Always glad to have Mama listening. So. Amen. And Mama, you can send me an offering if you want to. <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I know she just said that boy ain't got no sense. Mark chapter number three, and I want to begin reading in verse number one. The Bible says, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. 
And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Edema, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon. A great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. Our Father, as we bow today, we thank you for this day. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us the privilege and opportunity to gather within the house of God with our brothers and our sisters in Christ that we may worship, honor, and glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here today. God, we pray for every heart that, Lord, we would have open hearts and receptive hearts. Lord, that we would hear, not just with our ears, but, God, we would hear from our heart and hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches today. God, I pray if there's one in our midst that's lost, that, Lord, this will be the day they will say yes to Christ. I pray you revive us again. Stir our hearts, O oh God. And, Lord, we need you this morning. Lord, we need a work done, God, in our midst. We pray for the power of God uh, to move here today, Lord, in every life. And, Father, all that you do, we'll praise you and we'll thank you for it. For we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach this morning from these verses, and I want you to look at verse number two. And this is where I want to get my thought. The Bible says, and they watched him. And I want to preach on the thought, they watched him. You know, by way of introduction, I want to go back to uh, uh, the Old Testament to get a thought uh, concerning the Lord Jesus. When the Lord told Eli that, he was going to kill his sons and he was going to take the priesthood from his family. It's amazing to me how that God set up the priesthood there in the Old Testament. And, but then as they disobeyed God and went away away from God and the word of God, the will of God, God took the priesthood uh, from Eli's house. Amen. And uh, God took his sons and took the priesthood and destroy his family because he indulged his sons in their wickedness right in the very house of God. And in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35 and 36, this is what God said. He said, and I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say, put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's offices that I may eat a piece of bread. Well, God fulfilled his word in sending his son to be a merciful, faithful, obedient high priest over the house of God. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, that we have a perfect high priest. We don't have to worry about the priesthood any longer because we have the great high priest who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he is the great high priest. Now, here in the third chapter, chapter of the book of Mark, it opens with the Lord in his father's house doing his father's business according to his father's will. And here we also see the Pharisees, the Bible says they watched him in verse number two. In other words, they watched him that they might find some occasion that they might bring an accusation against him and they watched him to see 
see if he would heal on the Sabbath day because there was a man there within the church that had a withered hand. I want you to notice a few things this morning. First of all, I want you to notice that where they are is a place of hope. Amen. I want to say this morning that the house of God should be a place of hope. Amen. It should be a place when people with no hope can come and find hope. Amen. They can find help with God when they come unto the Father's house. I'm afraid there's a lot of buildings today that are called church buildings, but they have no hope within them. Amen. They don't have the word of God preached anymore. They've turned away from God. Amen. God hadn't been in there in so many years. They wouldn't know it if God walked in. Amen. But I'm telling you, the house of God should be a place of hope. Amen. In verse number one, the Bible said that he entered again into the synagogue and there was a man there which had a withered hand. Here comes a man into the synagogue and he's got a problem. Amen. He's got a withered hand. The house of God should be a place of hope. I mean, the house of God should be known as a place. Hey, there's some help that I can get down there. Amen. That's a place where I know I can go when things get bad. I can go to the house of God and find hope and help for my life. Amen. And here we find this man comes and he's got a withered hand. Now, we do not know if this man came to the house of God on a regular basis or because that he knew that the Lord was going to be there that day and came hoping maybe to be healed by the Lord. Whatever his reasons were, we do not know. But we do know the Savior's reasons for being there. Amen. I'm glad this morning that as the, our bulletin, I believe today, if you'll look at the cover of it, look at it. It says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. Here's what it says. There am I in the midst of them. Amen. I believe this morning we've gathered here into the house of God. It ought to be a place of hope and knowing that where two or three are gathered here together in his name, he's in the midst. Amen. And no matter what, I'm glad the Lord's here. We may not always look for him, but I'm glad he's always here. I'm looking for us. Amen. Out of the house of God. It's a place of hope. Amen. Uh, whatever the reason, there he is. Amen. Uh, I say today that the house of God uh, uh, should be a place that God's people gather to worship God uh, and a place of hope uh, uh, for needy sinners. Amen. Uh, notice this is a place uh, where God meets with men uh, and men meet with God. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, uh, as we read there in our bulletin, uh, uh, for where two or three are gathered together, in my name there am I in the midst of them. Amen. The house of God is a place of hope. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. I know you not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Amen. Hey, this is not a place of entertainment. This is not a place of social gatherings. This is a place where we can come and find help from God. This is a place where we can come uh, and pour our hearts out before the Lord. Amen. Uh, this is where we can come uh, to worship God and give Him glory uh, and honor and praise. Uh, and this is uh, the house of God. Uh, and it's here uh, to worship Him. Amen. 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 Hey, this is a place of hope. Amen. I don't know about you, there's been times uh, I, I'll tell you, I felt so bad, felt so down. Uh, but just get into the house. Sometimes just walking in makes me feel better. Amen. Then sometimes if just walking in don't make me feel better, if I can get down here all of a sudden they say, let's take our hymnals. Yeah. Amen. And we start singing boy, all of a sudden. Oh, that old dry spirit in my soul begins to wonder. Amen. Gives the voice of that a little bit. Amen. And then the word of God's open and they begin to read from it. And the Sunday school teachers begin 
the tent uh, and it just keeps getting a little better and they're all alone. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, you can find hope and help at the house of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is a place, a, a place of hope. Amen. But not only see it's a place of hope and the Lord was there and that's the reason there's hope at the house of God. The Lord's there. But not only see the, the, it's a place of hope, but I also see here a picture of hatred. Look at verse number two. And they watched him. You always got some folks, all they're doing is watching to find fault. Amen. Hello. Amen. I hope we ain't got none of them here this morning because if we do, you're going to be feeling real bad in about three minutes. <laughs> it's a picture of hatred. The Bible said, and they watched him. Whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. I got news for you. I don't care if he heals on the Sabbath or the midweek. Praise God that he's going to heal. Amen. But here they are. They're, they're the sticklers of the law. They're the pharisaical, if I can say it, the legalistic type of, of, of people that were always looking for fault instead of looking for favor from God. Amen. Amen. The Bible said they watched him whether he would heal. These Pharisees, here's the sad part, these Pharisees had no compassion whatsoever on the man that had a problem. Amen. Amen. And I know if we're not careful, now listen to me very closely. If we're not careful, if we have folks that just come to our church and they've never been in church, they don't know nothing about church, God help us not to look down upon them. If they don't look like us, dress like us, and smell like us, we better love them, we better have care for them, we better show compassion, you better be as friendly to them as you are to anybody else in the house of God. I tell you, you get folks saved. It won't take them long. The Holy Ghost will get a hold of them. Amen. Amen. Just love them. Amen. Amen. Well, I know back in the early days of our of my ministry and many others, if we saw it, we named it, claimed it. Amen. Amen. We, we thought we was really doing good. Amen. All we did was get to preach to them one time. Amen. Run them off and they never came back. Brother Ray, there may be people in hell today because of the way I was. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about compromising. I still disagree with sin. I'm still against it. Amen. I'm still against all these things in the world. But I'm telling you, folks, that come to the house of God that don't know no better. We better love them, love them, love them to Jesus is what we better. Amen. 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 When I first got saved, me and Deb got saved on that Friday night. And the first Sunday that we went to church, I still had long hair. But you know what? Didn't nobody say that about my hair. Didn't say nobody say that about what it looked like. They just came to love us. Amen. Amen. on that today. I got to move on. I got to get to that crowd that's the fault finding. Amen. But anyhow, they didn't have no compassion whatsoever on the man that had the withered hand. They were more concerned about finding fault with Christ. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 10 the Bible said, Behold, there was a man which had his hand withered and they asked him, said, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Here we can see the depravity and the deceitfulness of the human heart. These things happened on the day of worship. Hey, these things, listen, they didn't take place in a bar room. Wasn't a back alley somewhere, but it was taking place in the house of God. Amen. Men who were assembled there in the name of God, supposedly to hear the word of God and to worship God, were sitting there plotting to destroy the Son of God. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. 
these men who pretended to be so strict and so sanctimonious, so very precise about the things of God set in the house of God with malicious hearts plotting murder. That's exactly what they were doing. Notice what the Bible said. That they wanted to, uh, verse 6 says, that they might destroy him. That's what they were thinking about the whole time. You know, we must realize that there are always people watching us in order that they might find fault with us and think less of the Savior. Can I say, please don't allow my life to reflect the Savior when I'm not doing like I ought to. Now, don't y'all look at me so pious, bless God. I may like you and you may like me. But we need to live our lives so that we would not give anybody a reason, amen, to find fault. You say, how can we do that? Well, number one, seeking all things to do the will of God and to live for the glory of God. Years ago, I heard a preacher say, be sure that wherever you are, you wouldn't be ashamed to be found dead there. Woo! Mm. If you died where you was at last night, would you be ashamed for us to find out where you was? Hello? Amen. <laughs> Seeking all things to do the will of God and do all to the glory of God. Try to never give the enemies of our God an occasion to blaspheme. Do nothing that violates the law of God or the principles of righteousness. Always seek to do that which is good for and never injurious to others. If all we do is try to do good for others and help others and, and not to hurt anybody, I guarantee you your life will be a lot happier. But here they are sitting in the very synagogue, the house of God, plotting how they might destroy Jesus. And doing it all in the name of religion. Amen. In all things, seek to be governed by love for Christ and love for one another. We heard that in the opening in Sunday school this morning. Let love be your governing factor of your life. Amen. And so we see right here, beloved, we find they watched him in the place of hope. But we also see that it is a picture of hatred within this place of hope. Uh, let me just share this before I move on. I, 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 I want you to listen very closely. If we're not careful, we can do damage to the house of God without even knowing that we're doing damage. A preacher wrote this, and he says, Last Sunday, I voted to close the church. Not intentionally, not maliciously perhaps, but carelessly, thoughtlessly, lazily, indifferently. I voted, I voted to close its doors that its witness and its testimony might be stopped. I voted to close the open Bible on the pulpit, the Bible that had been given to us by the, the years of struggle and by the blood of martyrs who died that we might have it read. I voted for our minister to stop preaching the glorious truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I voted that the children of the Sunday school no longer be taught the stories of the Bible and no longer lift up their little voices in singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I voted for the voice of the choir and of the congregation to be stilled and that they no longer sing in united praise. I voted for every missionary of the church to be called home. Every native worker supported by the church to stop preaching. Every hospital, every school, every dispensary in its foreign missionary fields to close. I voted that the colleges close their doors and no longer bother to train its youth for Christian service. I voted for every home missionary project to be abandoned. Every influence for good and right 
and for truth and for our community to be abandoned. I voted for the darkness of superstition, the degrading influence of sin, the blight of ignorance and the curse of selfish greed once again to settle their load on the shoulders of an already overburdened world. For you see, I could have gone and I should have gone, but I didn't. I stayed away from church last Sunday. Yeah, man. Yeah. I read, somebody asked the question, it said, if your church was just like, if every member in your church was just like you, how many services would there be in a week? Amen. Woo! Now we're getting somewhere. Amen. We, they, hey, we're not praying yet. Come on. <laughs> where did all that shouting go? Amen. 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 And then we wonder, why can't I get my family here? They don't know if you'll be here or not. Well, glory. Ain't that good? That's good preaching if I am a doing it. Amen. 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 You say, well, I don't know why my people won't listen. I know why they won't listen. They got no confidence in you because of your unfaithfulness. Well, hallelujah. You know, when I first got saved, I know I must have been saved in the dark days compared to some of you. But I'm telling you, when we got saved, we got in to get in, to stay in, to be faithful. Amen. When the doors were open, we were there. Amen. If they opened the doors to clean, we were there. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. But then let me close. Hurriedly. Y'all, y'all, I'm losing you. We're going to have to get the, where's the, where's that, uh, what's that thing called to hang on the walls? Them defibrillators. <laughs> what is that thing? Uh, what, are they, what are they called? Somebody tell me, quick, hurry. Yeah, I know what it is, but I don't know what the name of the abbreviation of it. Uh -huh, you know what I'm talking about. We need to get us one because I'm afraid we may need it here for long. But not only we, not only we see a place of hope, we see a, play, a picture of hatred. But number three, and best of all, we see the power of heaven. Amen. Praise God. Look what happens. Verse number three. And he saith to the man which had the withered hand, stand forth. And he saith unto him, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to heal or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. All these folks sitting around with all this on their mind, but they didn't say a word. And verse number five. And when he, or verse number four, and he saith unto them, uh, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or do evil to save life or to kill it? They held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with what? Anger. He said, boy, the preacher act like he was really mad this morning. I may be. <laughs> Jesus looked at them with anger. That's right. Amen. There is a, such a thing as righteous indignation. Amen. 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 get on that either. When he looked around about them on, with anger, being here's why he was so angry, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. Here's a man within the house of God got a problem, needs help, needs hope. They don't even care about that situation. Their heart is so hard, they could care less about that man. No wonder he got angry. And then he said to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other. Amen. Thank God for the power of heaven. Amen. Oh, aren't you glad that even though there were those there that uh, were trying to find fault, trying to find some way to uh, bring accusation against our Lord uh, that they might destroy him. He didn't let that stop him. Uh, he didn't let that stop him from doing good. Uh, he didn't let that stop him from displaying the power of thank God of heaven in his life uh, and giving hope to a man that needed hope. Uh, I'm not as far as the spot while you're here. Uh, I'm not God still here uh, and he's willing to help whosoever will. Uh, that'll turn to him. 
makes no difference. But we see the power of heaven. Our Lord had come to the synagogue on an errand of mercy. He was not about to let those Pharisees turn him aside from doing the will of God. Amen. You can see in verse number three, there was a command given. In verse number four, there was a condemning question. In verse number five, we see his contemptible glare as he looked at them uh, and looked on them with anger because of the hardness of their hearts. But thank God for the compassionate grace that Jesus showed upon this man with the withered hand. Church, this morning I'm glad we can get to the place, the house of God, a place of hope. Oh, there may be there those there that they're not there for any other reason but just so they can leave and say, well, let me just tell you what that preacher had to say today. Amen. 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 Can I just tell you? Man, boy, they got something to say. Oh, the years that I've been pastoring here, it's always amazed me that I can find out more about my church. For people who don't come here. Amen. I find out things I don't even know. Amen. Isn't that amazing how that works? Oh my. Praise God. But I've just learned to try to, by the grace of God to just let it be like water on a duck's back. It don't hang there long. Amen. Because I know why we come here. We come here because it's a place of hope. We come here because this should be a place of compassion. Right. We come here today because I'm sure there are people here who need the Lord. Oh, if you're just not saved, you need to be saved. If you are saved and you got problems and burdens in your life, I'm glad he's still able Amen. to help you. He's here, praise God. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. I'm glad he's here this morning. And he's able to help us. And you and I this morning just need to be faithful. Faithful to the things of God. Faithful. Oh, oh as Brother Rick was teaching Sunday school this morning, and he's talking about Abraham. How Abraham got away from God, went down to Egypt. And Brother Rick, I, I, I cheated a little bit. I went over back to chapter 13. I read just a little bit down there. I'll tell you what fixed Abraham. Abraham went back to Bethel. Amen. <laughs> the Bible said he went back to that place where he had first built that altar. Amen. That's where we need to get back to. Amen. Let's get back to the first son. Let's get back to the first love. The first life. Oh, there's a song I love to hear and sing. And it says, take me back. I believe Mark Bishop sings it. Take me back to that place. Where I first found your grace. Amen. Take me back to that place. Amen. Where I loved you. Where I mean praise God. We just get back to where we was, where we used to be. The way we loved you, the way we served you, the way we cared for others, the way that we did things because we wanted to please him. That's where we need to get back to this morning. Amen. 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 I believe that's what the, what Jesus said in Revelation. Repent, do thy first works. Amen. Get back. Thank God the Lord's here. And if you've got a withered problem, whatever the problem is, stand forth and let be obedient to the Lord. And I guarantee the Lord will help you. Father, God, this morning, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to the place of hope. We can find the power of heaven. Oh, God, in the midst of your house. Lord, there may be those this morning that need a touch from heaven. Lord, there may be those that are lost that need to be saved. Those, Father, that have got away and need to get back to the first. God, whatever the need is, I pray we just get back to what we know is right. Lord, loving you and loving one another, being faithful, being a witness, laboring for the cause of Christ. Oh, Father, help us this morning. Help me, God. Oh, God, help me in my life. 
God, I want to be, Lord, what you would have me to be. Help me this morning, oh God. And we'll thank you, we'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. What number, brother? 210 near the cross. Maybe that's where you need, just need to get to the foot of the cross this morning. Pour your heart to him. They say, oh God, I've got away from you. God, I need to get back. Glory to God. You just mind the Lord. Oh, listen, just mind the Lord. supposed to be never gonna happen let's bow our heads while she plays through another verse listen you're never gonna find joy away from God if you're saved it's not gonna happen you may think it's working out right now but it's gonna turn But I'll tell you, before it turns bad, just get back to where you know you ought to be. Get back. What did he say? Do thy first works or... He said, I'll come and remove. Remove the candlestick from his place. I don't know about you, but I'd like to finish this thing the way God wants me to finish it. Not have to finish it Not finish it because of coldness. Getting away from God. I like to be able to finish this thing. Serving Him. Loving Him. Walking on Him. What about you this morning? You need to get back. Get back to that place where you love Him. Father, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. Oh, God, create within us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. God, bless your people and we'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you being here this morning in the service and do be much in prayer for the service tonight.